animating to hide auto or from display none in pure CSS is pretty much impossible. Or is it? Well, until now, you needed a little bit of JavaScript or you had to resort to various hacks like using fraction units with CSS grid in order to work around various problems. Not anymore. After watching this video, you'll never have to worry about animating to hide auto or from display none ever again. I've set up a simple demo, link is going to be in the description if you want to play around with it. And on this page, we have a container, which is exactly this. And we have a button toggle content, which is going to toggle an attribute on this particular container. I've set up this in JavaScript. Here I'm adding an event listener on the button. And when I click it, I toggle the attribute open on this container class. And when the attribute is present in CSS, all I'm doing is setting height of this container to auto, or in this case, block size, which is the logical equivalent of the height attribute. If you're not using logical CSS properties, well, you should be using those. And I have an in-depth guide exactly on that. Link should be on the screen and it will be in the description as well. Check it out if you're still not using logical CSS properties. In any case, by default, the container is set to 1.8 RAM units, which is exactly the size for this headline to be visible. And when the open attribute is present, then we're setting its height or block size to auto, which will essentially open and close this particular container. Let's say we want to animate this container between those two values, between block size 1.8 and block size auto. Then we would set up transition property on our container. Let's transition all properties over the course of one second. And let's use ease in out animation function. Now all properties, including block size should be transitioned or animated, but this is clearly not happening. And the reason for that is that auto is not animatable property. It's not transitionable because browser just doesn't know how to handle that. For example, if we set the block size here to 200 pixels, then this should be working. Let's try it out. As you see, this is transitioned exactly as it's expected. But of course, we don't know how much content there will be in this element. So we don't want to set the fixed size. I will change this back to auto and I will show you a new function that is coming to CSS that will help you solve this particular problem. And that function is cloak size. Cloak size function works exactly the same as cloak function, but it allows the browser to transition or animate auto values. Let's try it out. So I'll add another block size property here. I will add cloak size function and the value that I want to calculate will be auto. That is everything I need. If I try to toggle this container right now, you will see that it works exactly as expected. So if you want to transition to height auto, all you need is called size and inside of that, just the value auto. There is of course one drawback and that is the browser support. Unfortunately, this is at the time of recording only available in Chrome Canary and behind the flag. You have to have web platforms features flag enabled in order for this to work. If you don't know how to enable experimental platform features, I have a separate video on that. Link is going to be on the screen, so check it out. In any case, clock size is what you need. Unfortunately, it's supported only in Chrome Canary, but the beautiful thing is that you can use it right now today as progressive enhancement. And that is exactly why we will leave block size auto here in the code as well. This is going to be our fallback. So if the browser doesn't support clock size function, it will fall back to block size which means that the transition is not going to work, but the element is still going to be completely functional. One thing that you might have noticed is that we have this extra panel here that we didn't have when we had just block size auto and not clock size auto. And this is not really ideal. I think this is just the bug in the current implementation. This is still an experimental feature, so it's not really finished. That's why it's not in the stable. So hopefully by the time the clock size is released in the stable, version of the browser, it will work as expected and you won't see this extra padding that we have when we're using it right now. What if we want to hide this particular container, set it to display none and then animate it in? There is a simple solution for that as well and I will show you exactly how it works right now. Let's change this a little bit. I will set the block size of this element to zero now and padding block as well because I want to hide it completely. And of course, I will set display to none as well. By default, the element is now hidden. And if we add display block to our container open, then this is going to work as expected. Now, if I toggle the container, you'll see that it disappears and appears exactly as you would expect, but it's not animated. So what can we do to actually change this? There is a new transition property available, transition behavior, which you can set in order to tell the browser to animate properties that are basically unanimatable. The property is transition behavior, 
And just to note that if you're using a shorthand property like I'm using right here, you want to set this up after the shorthand property because otherwise this will be overwritten by the shorthand and the value that you want to set here is allow discrete. Allow discrete tells the browser that you want to transition properties that are not animatable. For example, display and visibility. By default, those properties are either zero or one, either they are applied or not, but if you set transition behavior to allow discrete, this will tell the browser to wait with the properties that are not animatable until the end of the transition, which is one second in our example, and when this is finished, then this value should be applied. If I try to toggle my container here, you'll see that it works pretty much as expected. And actually, I see now that I have a problem here. This shouldn't be padding zero block, but just padding block. And then I also want to set padding block on my open style. We'll set the padding block here to two rem units, just so we have a nice little bit of white space between our content and edge of our container. So now that we have applied transition behavior property, transition is working as expected. Once you close the container, it will be transitioned out to display none because transition behavior allow discrete tells the browser to wait for the entire transition to finish before applying this particular value display none because otherwise the element would just disappear from the page without being transitioned, without being animated. Here's the problem. If you try to open it, this will not work. Element will just appear. The problem is that the browser at this point doesn't know what it should do when the element is being transitioned in or rather display block is applied immediately and that's why the element just appears without being animated from block size zero to block size auto. There is of course a very simple way to solve that as well. There is a new at rule that you can use exactly for this and that at rule is starting style. You can apply it directly in the selector where you have open styles applied. So in my case, this is going to be container open. I will set starting style at rule at starting style. And here I will set starting styles. This should be transitioned. In our case, this is going to be block size zero and the padding block zero because we are transitioning those two properties. Let's try it out again. Our exit transition was working well even before we added this, but what about our starting transition? It works exactly as you would expect. So if you want to transition from display none or from visibility hidden, for example, you can use transition behavior property and set it to allow discrete, which will tell the browser to wait for the transition to finish before applying those non-transitionable properties like display or visibility. And then to animate those elements or transition those elements in, you will need to set starting style at rule and tell the browser what are exactly the starting styles from which the transition will happen. This at rule can be applied directly within the selector where you need it, or you can even apply it separately. And I'll add it exactly here after my selector. But in this case, of course, I will need to add also my selector so the browser knows exactly for which selector this starting style should be applied. Let's try it out again. It works exactly as you would expect. The important thing to know about transition behavior and starting style at rule is that they will only work if you subscribe to CSS Weekly YouTube channel. And I'm not even kidding about that. Maybe I am. But if you do subscribe, I will be very grateful. The transition behavior property and starting style at rule are both supported in stable Chrome and Safari, but not in Firefox. So you will still have to use this as progressive enhancement but of course, in the browsers that don't support either starting style or transition behavior, this will work properly just without an animation. Of course, this means that you can apply all of this that I've shown you in this particular demo as progressive enhancement. So you don't need to resort to JavaScript to either animate from display none or to animate to hide auto, which is, I hope you understand, a fantastic thing. By the way, if you've noticed, I have CSS stickers content in this particular container. And this is my project CSS stickers, a set of fantastic, beautiful CSS stickers that I've designed. If I designed them, they must be beautiful, right? So if you want to check those out, please do so. Link is going to be in the description. And of course, by doing that, you will directly support CSS Weekly and this particular challenge. Thanks so much. So use this as progressive enhancement today. 
and hopefully soon enough this will be supported in all major browsers and then you won't have to worry about animating from height 0 to height auto and from display none to display block. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Zoran Yambor. I will see and hear you in a different CSS transition or rather in the next video.